I will always remember the moment as a young boy walking to school when my mother pointed out to a garbage man. A garbage man, I thought, the worst job out there, picking up and cleaning up other people's trash. For the last 10 years, my life has fully revolved around trash. Growing up on the island of Bali, plastics is everywhere, in our beaches, in our rivers, in the ocean. During big rains, our beaches are literally covered in this very material, making our most populated beach, Kuta, completely dredged in plastic. And as you can see, this is completely unbearable to, to, to witness and experience. But plastics, single-use plastics, some are now saying it is a material that should have never existed, so much so that it is choking our ocean. There are 500 times more pieces of plastics in the ocean than there are stars in our galaxy. And as we know it, we know the vivid effects of plastics on our marine life. We've seen the photos of turtles being impacted by plastics. We've seen turtles choking on straws. But we're dealing with it on an everyday basis, from the air that we breathe to both the tap and bottled water we drink, the food we eat, it's everywhere. And despite viral videos on, on social media and single use being named the word of the year in 2018, we still all use it. And so at 14 years old, I was revolted with the, this idea that my very beaches were covered in plastics. This was 10 years ago. Um, and so I came back home one day with my brother and with my sister, and we knew that change needed to happen. So we started a movement that we called Make a Change. Um, to really protect our island coastline and clean up the very island. But clean up after clean up, we really realized that our effort-driven uh, movement was not going anywhere. We were actually just sweeping the floor in good faith. And in Indonesia, plastic pollution is really a people's problem. It starts on land because of the minimal budget that we have for waste management, um, we have open dumps everywhere you go, um, up to some of the biggest landfills in the world, and in turn, turning our rivers into major dumping grounds. And so, after really realizing the source of this plastic pollution problem, where actually 90% comes from, from land, we decided that we wanted sh to shift our mission to tackle waterways and rivers. And so, in the summer of 2016, with a group of friends, on one of my summer breaks from university in, in the US, uh, we were inspired by Mark Twain's Huckleberry Finn to build a junk raft made from 800 plastic bottles, a recycled deck from wood, and a sail made from old tents that we stitched together. It was an epic journey, as you can imagine, two months floating down the big muddy. And this is a little video to show you how epic the adventure was. Traveling down on the Big Muddy, floating on plastic bottles, was an amazing way. We were literally a recycled expose going from harbor to harbor. People were interested in seeing the trash boat, um, and it was amazing to use the vessel as a way to communicate and engage with the local activists all along the river. But the truth is, we weren't really seeing the physical forms of plastics on the river. The Mississippi is one of America's most important waterways, where 41% of America's water dredges right at the Gulf of Mexico, where it enters the Caribbean Sea. And with um, this trip, we used it as a scientific vessel to perform some of the first microplastic uh, tests in the upper Mississippi in collaboration with the Louisiana State University. And there, with the results, came out that trillions of microplastic particles flowed down right here at the Gulf of Mexico every single day. Trillions of microplastics. But when you think about the numbers and the data, how can you possibly visualize such a big number? The water of the Mississippi was very muddy, and we weren't seeing visual effects of the actual plastics floating through. So the next summer, we were inspired to take this project back to our home island and our home country of Indonesia. Um, and there, really Googled the most polluted river, only to realize that it was located on the island of Java in Indonesia, 
located right east of Indonesia's capital, Jakarta. And with my brother, this time we were floating on smaller vessels. We built two plastic bottle kayaks made from 300 plastic bottles, a recycle net, and a bamboo frame. But this time, we were going to go on a very different river. The Chitarum runs for 300 kilometers through West Java, Indonesia's most populated province. Some of the biggest factories dump their water directly into the river. It's your H&M, your Gap, your Zara, your Polo Ralph Lauren, you name it. People are directly dumping their waste directly into the river, creating these rainbow colors um, of water waste directly. From a smell, it's like your rotten egg, your animal dead flesh. Um, it was completely unbearable to be witnessing this first end. But obviously, one of our biggest problems was not going to be not to fall inside the water. So floating on these little plastic bottle kayaks where we just had plastic bottles right underneath <laughs> with this water, we wanted to make sure to be as protected as possible to make sure that we would be, be OK. But what we witnessed on the river was completely horrendous. It would be piles of trash dumped on both sides of, of the river, uh, open fires at almost every 300 meters, at one point, we were stuck in a plastic berg where the plastic layers were so thick that when we rode, it was impossible to move a meter. Um, and these are the conditions that our world are living in. I think if everybody was to truly experience the conditions of the cheetah room, we would be in a much further situation. Every rainfall, I have this nightmare that comes to mind of this plastic gushing down the rivers. And this is what we truly experienced on our third day of the cheetah room. This is a little video to show you what it's like. This is literally the situation I'm in right now. All this trash, it's like everywhere. Wow, I've never seen so much of it. We produced a video series documenting our trip and we're amazed by how much attention we got on social media, by international media and national media. media. Two weeks after finishing the expedition, our message was heard. The Ministry of the Environment invited us to declare an emergency cleanup after watching this video. And four months later, this happened. Are you Greg? Greg. Gary. 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 You will become the ice <laughs> for the world. What we do here? Kerry, hi. Sudah berapa tahun? Sudah sepuluh tahun di Bali dulu. Tahun. Oh di Bali. Yeah. Okay. It's amazing to see the momentum that you built around cleaning the river on an, and on an international level to really restore mm. what has been mediatized as one of the most polluted rivers. Mm. Maybe you. you will see in seven years. It's amazing, amazing. Do you think I can get you on um, camera to say a statement like that? <laughs> I'm trying to build, yeah? Mm? Do you think you could do it on, on camera? Whenever you're ready. Mm? So, what, what do you think about <laughs> the Citarum? Do you think it's uh, possible for it to be clean again? Uh, Gary, you will see that the uh, Citarum River in seven years will be in the cleanest river. So that was an amazing accomplishment. <laughs> not, not only did it show us that you know, change could be possible from crazy ideas, but Indonesia has made a national emergency to clean up this very river. Uh, they've deployed 7,000 military troops to clean up the Chitarum to make it the world's most clean, cleanest rivers within seven years. 
And this has been two years since the cleanup has gone underway. Um, and we've been going back and forth to monitor the change, uh, back and forth to the river. And we're seeing that you know, entire communities are starting to adopt no plastic policies, which is super positive. 70 to 100 factories have actually been closed down due to legal waste dumping. So you're not having um, dumping of illegal waste anymore within the river. Um, and on one of my last meetings with one of Indonesia's head general, he even announced that Indonesia is the second biggest polluter to plastic pollution in our oceans, was declaring a war against plastic. Um, and he said that Indonesia would not go to war until its waterways would be fully cleaned up. So that's what I call peace and clean. Uh, and it, it's an amazing way, but that has also inspired us to look at solutions to stop the endless flow of plastics in our rivers into the ocean. So we've deployed some trash barriers, some low-tech solutions to stop the flow. Um, and we are launching, in Davos, a soft launch of our interactive platform called Sungai Watch to monitor the world's rivers in real time. Um, and so we're deploying technologies like these, very simple solutions, low-cost solutions. Uh, we're even putting monitors with our pa partners, Plastic Fisher, to test out the HP level so that we can know much better where these main areas of trash are. So using satellite imagery and also using citizen science data to tackle our world's rivers. And obviously, you know, when you start doing this and you start getting um, reactions from governments, one idea just inspires the next. So the rivers are just the, the main concentration, but um, this has really start, um, in, inspired us to even go more crazy. So for the last six months, my younger brother Sam has been running across the American continent, running a marathon every single day for the past six months um, with shoes made from recycled plastics uh, from Adidas X Parley, meeting with governors, mayors, schools. Uh, he's spoken to over 10,000 people, and this February 1st, we'll be celebrating at, in the Pacific Ocean uh, in LA. So we're very excited to have him finish, inspired by Forrest Gump, as you can see behind me. There has never been a more important time to act than now. Since I started this talk, 200 metric tons of plastic pollution would have entered our ocean, and it's, it's so important to take action today. So that very little boy in me that looked at the garbage man as a young little boy got super inspired by the crazy ideas that fuel me every day. So what is your crazy idea? Thank you.